In this exercise, we'll apply our mask as a layer mask, and then we'll clean up some of the hairs over here on the right-hand side of the head. I've saved this image as secondpassmask.psd, found inside the O2 dark folder. I'm going to start things off by loading this mask as a selection, and I'll do that by control clicking or command clicking on this final alpha channel in the list. And then I'll scroll up to the top of the panel, click on RGB to make it active, and then switch over to the layers panel. In order to reinstate these fine hairs that we're seeing over here on the right hand side, I'm going to need a multiply layer. I'll go ahead and make a duplicate of this model layer before I mask her. However, if I try to do so by pressing Control J or Command J on the Mac, then I'll just go ahead and jump the selected portion of the image, which is not what I want. So I'll press Control Z or Command Z on the Mac to undo that. And instead, I'll just go ahead and right click on an empty portion of the layer, choose the Duplicate Layer command, and then click OK in order to create that duplicate layer. Now I'll drop down to the Add Layer Mask icon at the bottom of the panel and click on it in order to apply the selection as a layer mask. And it ends up looking like this. I'll have to turn off the background model layer so that you can see what we've got here. And notice that these left side hairs look absolutely great. I'll just go ahead and control drag or command drag this layer over to the right so that you can see how these light hairs look against the solid blue background. They end up looking quite nice indeed. Go ahead and press control Z or command Z in order to move this layer back to where it was. It's just that those bright details don't show up that well against that cloud. They will by time we're done with this composition, as you'll see, because we're going to have to modify the background in order to make things work out properly. But we have all kinds of rough details going on over here on the right-hand side. I'm going to go ahead and turn on that model layer, the unmasked one in the background, click on it to make it active, double-click on its name, and I'm going to call it Filler, because it's just going to fill in a few minor details here. I'll set the Blend Mode to Multiply so that we're darkening those hairs into the background. And you can see that does a great job of reinstating those hairs. However, now we've got this C that's inexplicably showing up down here toward the bottom portion of the image. We don't want that. The first thing I'm going to do is mask away the entire layer by pressing the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac and clicking on the Add Layer Mask icon so that we mask away the entire image. And now I'll get my brush tool, which I can get by pressing the B key, of course, right click inside the image window, crank the hardness value down to 0% so that we've got a very soft brush. Increase the size of the brush by pressing the right bracket key a few times. Go ahead and press the D key in order to make sure your foreground color is white. And then let's paint in some of these details like so in order to bring back some of those hairs. Now I'm bringing back too much information. I'm bringing back some of the C as well. And you can see that I'm incrementally darkening the image over in this unmasked area. So I want to drop out some of the luminance levels of this layer, and I'll do that by double-clicking the Layer Mask thumbnail to bring up the Layer Style dialog box. And then I'll go ahead and drag this white slider triangle, the one that's associated with the This Layer slider bar, and I'll take it down to 175. So I'm saying anything with a luminance level of 175 or brighter is going to disappear, turn invisible. That gets rid of all those hairs that I'm trying to keep. So I'll press the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac, and drag the right side of that white triangle over to 230, which ends up producing a pretty good result. I'll now go ahead and click OK. Notice we still have a little bit of darkening going on. We'll have to paint that away. And obviously, we're seeing the C, which is no good. So I'm going to reduce the size of my cursor. Make sure the layer mask is selected. Very important. So I'll go ahead and click on that thumbnail. I'll press the X key to switch my foreground color to black. And I'll paint that C away like so. And I'm going to increase the size of my brush a little bit and paint in some other locations. I'm just clicking here and there in order to paint some of those details away. Just that little bit of a multiply layer is all we need. It looks to me from the appearance of my layer mask thumbnail that I have a little bit of extra white sticking out here on the far right side. I'll alt click or option click on that layer mask so I can view it independently. And I'll just go ahead and paint that region away, paint this area away as well. Alt-click or Option-click again so that we can see the RGB composite image. And just to give you a sense of the contribution being made by this filler layer, I'll turn it off. So that's how the composition looks without that additional darkening layer. Here's what it looks like with that darkening layer. We've got some nice hairs going on here. It might be that I have a little bit too much darkening going on in this detail right there. I'm going to press the 3 key to reduce the opacity of my brush to 30%. 
And then I'm going to click right about there and there as well in order to somewhat mask those details away. Things are definitely looking better. However, they are not looking best. We've got a terrible detail going on down here in the bottom portion of this hair, and I'll show you how to fix it in the next exercise.